Now, if you're visiting my shop, you'll notice I haven't saved a whole lot of trophies. But one of the ones I have saved is the 1982 Old Timers from Lincoln, Nebraska. There was a reason I saved this, because I really enjoyed competing in Old time Stunt years ago, and I had a lot of, I guess, interest in nostalgia ships, things like that. Of course, I have my own nostalgia ship, the Sweeper. But what happened once I, once I won the Nats and got this trophy, which is one of the only few that I've kept beside the Concourse ones and a very few others that have some meaning, because I decided I wanted to concentrate most of my effort in the future of the event rather than the past. The carbon fiber parts, the tune pipes, the four strokes, the twin engines, the whatever. I wanted, I wanted to concentrate my effort and I felt if I spent too much time building old time stunt planes, well it would detract from, from what I really wanted to do and I know one of the things is I've tried to accumulate footage from years ago, and I got some footage from Buzz Parika. This is from the 19, not 82, the 1962 Nats. Share a few minutes of this. There's no sound on it. I'm just going to record the picture. There's no sound, but there's some interesting stuff. And you always hear about how years ago the planes were flew better than the modern planes and had <clears throat> have different things. Well, I actually was at the 62 Nats. And this is how it was. This is this is actually footage, rare footage, converted to video by Buzz Parika. Share a few minutes with us. And sorry, there is no sound. Again, the quality is not good, but this is some, some really nice footage. Again, if you were there, and I was, I, I, boy, this stirs up memories. Remember the greatest thing, those, those pith hats or helmets or whatever they were? Look, here's some combat footage. Now, this is footage that's 62, 40 years old, 42 years old. Now, the thing that's different is, the people that really, really, you know, we got some bad footage here, but, there's actually, this is Jerry Sippler flying, and they have a, a good part of his flight on video. He won the Walker Cup that year. Some free flights. I mean, this was, this was really 8 millimeter movies. There's Jerry Sippler's Nobler. But if you're a nostalgia buff, and I just think for me, it's not, it's not really my thing to be a nostalgia guy. I think the thing that I can contribute back to the hobby most of all is to document everything as much as I can, help people as much as I can, and and basically make it as much fun as I possibly can. Now, I remember this. Now, this to, to show you how good my memory is, I remember looking at these planes, and of course there were a father, a grandfather, and a son that basically had interchangeable noblers. And I remember thinking at the time, my plane looked like 80 grit sandpaper, and asking these guys, you know, how do you get that nice dope finish? And you, I won't even repeat what the answer is. Figure it out yourself, you punk kid. Anyway, I'm not sure who this is. This might be Billy Woolridge. It's hard to tell. No, this is one of the other sippers. Maybe still Haiti. It's just hard to tell. But anyway, some of this footage was very, very nostalgic to remember these things and remember the time that we all had years ago and that Buzz Parika has been kind enough to... Hey, that's that's so Hades plane right there. To make uh, this footage available and to try to preserve it like all the people who try to preserve our event. It's difficult work. Not many people want to spend the time and money and energy to do it, but I think it's well worth it. Especially this old footage. That once this is gone, movie film deteriorates even quicker than somebody having a rough landing. Even quicker than uh, video. And of course, a lot of the people that are in this, the old hangars, 
other people that are in this have long since passed away. But it brings back a lot of memories. And without this, I think I think it's fair to say we'd all be poorer. That looks like it might be Bob Gialdini, I can't tell. Again, this is not, here's Larry Scorinzi with the Trident. And I know Larry, when I gave Larry a copy of this, he was really almost, spe hard to believe Larry could be speechless, but he was almost speechless. Here you see we're flying on a naval air base. Anyway, it was, it was just the best of times. A lot of fun and great, great memories. And you always hear about how great the old planes flew and how they flew six second laps and they did this and they had more corner than this and less than that and uh, well, you know, if you have some footage, you can kind of decide for yourself. And it's, it's not a fair comparison anyway, even if you could somehow enhance this video or make it digital quality. But I'm always thankful to the people that did preserve some of this, Harold Price for one. When Harold passed away, we converted a lot of his 8mm movies to video and that footage is now priceless. There's no amount of money can get that back if it's lost. Again, it's a shame that some of this footage is not as as good as it could be. But believe me, it's all we have. Remembering some of the things that were funny back then, the pull test. Basically, people didn't dress up. wasn't a dress-up event yet. Just to name a few things. And you had on these naval bases, Glenview and, and Willowbrook, Willowbrook, Willowbrook Road, you had basically unlimited circles. Everybody had their own practice circle. And guys like Lou McFarland and, and some of the other people, I think Lou was the open winner this year, they they would practice the whole day, on a, almost for all purposes, a private circle. It was a great time. And the hangar, most of all, the hangar. If you never were to a Nats that where there was a hangar, because this is still, I think they still had Navy judges at this time. And you never had a question about the judging or anything. You didn't even know who they were. And five minutes after the event, they were gone. If you didn't like the judging, tough. And if you liked it, great. You couldn't even take them out to dinner or hug them and kiss them or whatever. It was, a, it was for all purposes a different event. This looks like Steve Woolley here. Again, I'm, I may be misinterpreting this. No, that's Steve Woolley, all right. And this, this plane that you see in this footage is now in the AMA Museum. It's, it's, it's not hanging, it's up in the rafters. It looked like it needed a little maintenance. But anyway, I, I made this personal choice that I was not going to pursue nostalgia because what intrigued me about the event and the sport was the future of the sport. The ARFs, the carbon parts, the making the models easier and quicker to build, uh, and basically uh, helping John Brodak develop some of his product line that, that I think has really changed the event. I think without John Brodak's line of products, this, this would be a totally different event. And if you had sound, you'd know for sure. All of these, all of these planes had no muffler. This is pre-muffler time. This is raw fuel on your hand. Prime it through the Venturi. Yeah, that's Steve, all right. Steve, of course, has passed away. That looks like Gialdini. Bob Gialdini. Just saw Bob Gialdini at the recent team trials. He was a judge. He looks great. He looks in the prime of his life.
This is actually part of a Bob Gildini affair. I would assume it's an official flight. Looks like there are judges off to the right. I often think of something that may or may not make sense to a lot of people. I often wonder if, supposing, just supposing we had never ever had the invention of video, I mean, just, just think how poor we'd all be. I mean, just not having the Brodac flying videos, the Nats videos, if Bob Hunt had never done the, the uh, VSC videos, and people miss these events, and with the upcoming World Championships, we will have some killer interviews and some killer footage, and I'm, I can't tell you how much I'm looking for. This is, this is hopefully going to be the best season of, in the world of all times, since dinosaurs. The classic look of the Olympic, which is now a Brodac kit. One of the planes I remember as being very pretty to Venus. This is Mario Rondinelli's Venus. There's the Venus. Beautiful, beautiful ship. But I remember, see, is this may be one of the, the really pretty nobles. I remember these guys that had a beautiful finish. That, that looks like one of the Cipra, adult Cipras. The, they had these beautiful finishes, and, and believe me, they kept it a secret. Trust me, they were, there were no Cipra videos back then. <laughs> and so that's part of my legacy. And I hope, with John Brodak's help, we've all tried to uh, help the sport grow, let it, let it evolve into what it is today, where we really do have some special lifetime commitments. But it all the roots go back to these original original people like Bob Gildini and like oh Lou McFarlane for one, Billy Warwich for another one, just Larry Scarinzi. Larry really was some special guy. He used to fly combat and stunt back to back flights, run to the combat circle, take a flight. And his combat ships looked like stunt ships. They were buffed out, they were beautiful. Now, unlike the uh, the style of the day, the monocoat or the uh, Russian ones that are relatively simple, they were beautiful, beautiful models in their own right. Anyway, I really hope you have kind of enjoyed some of this old footage. But again, don't look don't look to me to be building this nostalgia planes and just no special reason. It's just I just feel like my contribution back lies elsewhere. And this is how most people started the planes years ago. I remember this like it was yesterday. Wow, what memories. And I always keep hoping. See, it's one of my hopes, but it, it doesn't ever come true. I hope Somewhere, somebody will have some footage of my model that I flew at the 62 Nats. Because as far as I know, I'm the only one that has a, even a picture of it, let alone video. I would pay anything for some of the video of how bad of a flyer I was back then. But maybe I'm glad, maybe I should be glad they don't have video of it. Even back then, they were taking pictures of people coming out of the outhouse. You believe that? There's the Aeron, Jimmy Vornholz Aeron. Look at the old cars. The Olympics were very popular. Several people had Olympic type planes. And again, thanks to John Brodak's Olympic kit, they live on. Chicky's enjoying watching this footage. Well, 
point, looking at this reminds me of some of the days we went flying with Billy Simons and Gene Schaefer and all the guys back in that, actually Bob Lampione, and everybody had these Fox 35 powered planes that had no muffler at all. Wow, what memories. So I guess there really is a charm to the nostalgia event and that attracts a lot of people and I guess maybe in my own way, I wish I was one of them, but, but I'm not. And I think the list of things that I've invented, contributed, developed, whatever you want to call it, or just plain stolen, I don't know what the right word is. But I do know that there's something there. Boy, oh boy, what? But you could cry when you think of how young we all were and how much of your whole life lay ahead of you. And you get up in the morning and all you could think about was going to the flying field. Look at Larry's trident. Look at that. Look at that trident. Focus in on that for a minute. Now believe me when I tell you, this model was buffed. Buffed. This was, Larry was so far ahead of his time. And actually, Larry and John DeTavio were two of the people that inspired me to uh, you know, help other people and, and make that my, my whatever, rather than just trying to accumulate trophies by the dozen. What a life it was. Wow. But anyway, enough nostalgia. The 62 Nats is 42 years old. And the 2004 Brodak is going on as we speak. And thanks to John Brodak, I hope we'll have many, many more of these great times ahead of us. And we can keep it as a tradition right to the very end. This is how they judged appearance. Check this out. This is the real thing. These are the two, the two guys with the red hats, a Navy judge, or judges. I don't really know. They did their appearance judging. Looks like they're doing it right on the field. Remember how many people back then were building Olympic-type planes? Looks like there's about 10 of them on this video. And then you see the AMA number on that wing? You see that tar strip? But unfortunately, I'm not on that video. Buzz, you should have taken pictures of me. I would have paid you for that video. And again, special thanks to Buzz Perica. And special thanks to everybody that saves the old pictures, the old magazines, so we know the history of where we've been. And hopefully uh, we can have a level of appreciation we wouldn't have without that. And thanks to Harold Price for helping me way back then. And maybe before I die, I'm going to have one season. I'm just going to build me up another sweeper, just like I did back in 66. And just bring it out to the contest and fly it with a Tiger 60. Now just think, in 1966, how many people had, well, had Super Tiger 60s? Uh, not many, if any. And one of the few remaining pictures I have that John Musk donated to me from, the, uh, from his collection from 1967. Plane here was already a year old, and uh, I was old, and... Well, I'm getting older by the minute. A lot of good memories. Hope you enjoyed that little that little vignette of footage. Back to the action of Brodax. Division not only had a whale of a problem on its hand, it had a stinking whale of a problem. What to do with one 45-foot, 8-ton whale dead on arrival on the beach near Florence? It had been so long since a whale had washed up in Lane County, nobody could remember how to get rid of one. 
in selecting its battle plan, the highway division decided the carcass couldn't be buried because it might soon be uncovered. It couldn't be cut up and then buried because nobody wanted to cut it up, and it couldn't be burned. So dynamite it was, some 20 cases or a half ton of it. The hope was that the long dead Pacific Grey Whale would be almost disintegrated by the blast, and that any small pieces still around after the explosion would be taken care of by seagulls and other scavengers. Indeed, the seagulls had been standing nearby all day. As everything was being made ready, we asked George Thornton, the highway engineer in charge of the project, for his final observation. Well, I'm confident that it'll work. The only thing is we're not sure just exactly how much uh, explosives it'll take to disintegrate this thing, so the scavenger seagulls and perhaps will have to clean it up. Is there any chance it might be more than a one-day job? Uh, if there's any large chunks left, and uh, we may have to do some other cleanup, possibly set another charge. The dynamite was buried primarily on the leeward side of the big mammal, so that most of the remains would be blown toward the sea. About 75 bystanders, most of them residents who had first found the whale to be an object of curiosity before they tired of its smell, were moved back a quarter of a mile away. The sand dunes there were covered with spectators and land lover newsmen shortly to become land blubber newsmen, with a blast blasted blubber beyond all believable bounds. rolling immediately after the blast, the humor of the entire situation suddenly gave way to a run for survival as huge chunks of whale blubber fell everywhere. Pieces of meat passed high over our heads while others were falling at our feet. The dunes were rapidly evacuated as spectators escaped both the falling debris and the overwhelming smell. A parked car over a quarter of a mile from the blast site was the target of one large chunk. The passenger compartment literally smashed. Fortunately, no human was hit as badly as the car, however, everyone on the scene was covered with small particles of dead whale. As for the success of the effort, well, the seagulls who were supposed to clean things up were nowhere in sight, either scared away by the explosion or kept away by the smell. That didn't really matter, the remaining chunks were of such a size that no respectable seagull would attempt to tackle anyway. As darkness began to set in, the highway crews were back on the beach burying the remains, including a large piece of the carcass which never left the blast site. It might be concluded that should a whale ever wash ashore in Lane County again, those in charge will not only remember what to do, they'll certainly remember what not to do. Back, back to the action at Borax. We've watched that a thousand times in the shop, and it's just as funny the first time as the last. Back to the action at Brodex. So it might be said, if you have a uh, whale on a beach near your house, don't use dynamite to get rid of it. Good lesson to be learned there. Now we're going back, today is going to be some of the nostalgia events, the racing events. We got a lot to cover, so we're going to get back onto the, back onto the field. Lauren is just in love with this tree, and she's dying for me to find out what kind of tree it is. And, and second, if we can get a shovel and transplant it and bring it back to our house in Rutherford. But somehow I don't think Buzz is going to go for that. I see they got through the night and nobody stole the sweeper. But they didn't leave it out in the rain. 25 years old, 26 years old. And we sure hope we're still going to get Danny Banjack to get a flight on this before this event is over. Tonight we were looking at some of the prototype ARFs. And there are a lot of them. And they will all be available commercially very soon. Thanks to John Brodak, we're going to be adding a whole new dimension, a whole new dimension to the event. the smoothie prototype off here. Bob's in 
I rigged up this looks like pretty sophisticated exhaust system on the radio last night. So many things happening all at the same time here. And I hope you're enjoying the videos as much as we're enjoying making it for you. back and make a little tour of the circle, see some of the action. There's action on every circle right now. There are no practice circles. Everything is an official event. Oh, oh happy day. Oh, happy day. Oh. You guys have no sense of humor at all. At all. He looks like a video man, but this is really a box of cornflakes. I'm just eating the camera. That's sick. As you can imagine, trying to include everybody in on our set of tapes and we never know until the event is over how many tapes there are going to be. Difficult. We try our best and we just hope we really don't miss anybody. We really do do our best. Trust me.
I'm not sure real carrier planes exactly landed exactly like this. I'm not sure. My father was a Navy pilot and a Navy flight instructor. Somehow I don't think that's how they landed. But what do I know? It's challenging. I flew I flew carrier in the 60s when everybody had a McCoy 60. Yeah. I don't see any McCoy 60s no, here, so I guess I'm a, I'm a little out of touch. Okay. Your career was short, sweet, and expensive. McCoy 60s. That was a good turn out for the event there. That was the people from our club that went to this event. And it is pleasantly cool right now. It's not raining and it's cool, so probably, I probably without question, this would be the best air that we've had since we've been here. But you can see the ominous clouds, maybe above us. Ominous. It's ominous, Wendy. Ominous, not ominous. You hear my wife right behind me, son. It's ominous, not ominous. Actually not 25 hours, because a lot of the time the camera's on your shoulders and you're not shooting, so it's more like 50 or 60 hours, but you know what, it's the life we've chosen, and I really enjoy documenting the event. Nothing I enjoy more than the middle of the winter when there's snow on the ground, and I come in from a day of shoveling the snows of Rutherford, pop in the videos of a road years gone by, and just, just sit back and chill and build. Sure. As you can imagine, I'm already dreaming about next year's project, the Tiger Cat. Something about, I don't even finish one project, and I'm already dreaming of the next one, so I don't know if that's an illness or not. I don't know if other people do that.
Marvel, the official first official. What happened to the pilot in the front? He bailed out? Yeah, he, he sick it out, man. This, he said, this is for the birds. Yeah. I'll take the easy way out. Right. I'll shoot video. That was uh, uh, George Bush at first. <laughs> he didn't finish the job, yeah. huh? Tony Estella Ortnowski, Owen W. Railroad. <laughs> I think we got to just forget about building your railroad. You keep buying me locomotives, I'll let you use my layout. That seems to be the way it's going. Like it or not, that's how our marriage of opportunity has taken us. You up next? I'm up next. All right, I'll hang here, because it's my one chance in life to make you famous. Make, make sure the sun stays behind the clouds. That's right. And the breeze. Oh, if you complain about the air now. No, the air. No, just yeah. shut up. Don't say it. As he said, oh, the wind is blowing. Look at the wind's blowing now. <laughs> We only put the battery on the more. No, it's good. It as soon as you put the battery on, it triggers a reaction into the clouds. This guy's got a lean run, and he's going to fly another 20 laps. Yeah, he'll be there half an hour. I know, he just shut off. All right, go get him, Mike. Okay. You got a pit boy? Yeah, I want to Okay. I'll try to make you as famous as you possibly can be. So Terry, the people from, from Bounty Paper Towel are here, they want an endorsement. If you're going to be toilet papered, what brand do you, do you recommend to be toilet papered by? Don't squeeze the Charmin. Don't squeeze Terry. <laughs> you know, Will Huben has pictures of that, you're going to be on a cover of Stunt News. If the outhouse is out of toilet paper, just see Terry. Thank you very much, Wendy. It was, it was a joy. <laughs> I'll go to my grave a happy man. Look at this fake competitor over here trying to shoot video, trying to upstage Wendy. Look at this, look at this. Where were you in 1987 when everybody said they'd never make it in the world of video? Where were you? Where, where was he in 1987? Where were you, Gary? Yeah. Telling everybody there's no future in video. Nah, Wendy, you'll never make it in video. You'll never be a movie producer. He was right. <laughs> Look at this, a guy with a suit on, you believe this? Let's see if he can pull his pants down while he's doing an interview. Hey, Mike Costello. The pride of... East Caldwell or West Caldwell or Fairfield or wherever he lives. Somewhere west of... Oh, boy. Famous. Famous. Yeah, it's an APC. How can it be broken? What's that? Can you help me answer these questions? Help you? Okay, you ready? Yeah. You got a suit on. What are you doing wearing pretty clothes here? <laughs> but I'll, I'll mimic the questions. <laughs> they want pretty ladies. What's your question? Look at my fake competition over here. There's more people with fake windy competition. All run windy right out of business, the bum. Sure. Pioneer the event over here. Yeah, I don't know.
problem with being famous. It doesn't always work out. Sometimes you eat a chicken and sometimes you eat a chicken pot pie. Okay, Mike Costello, first official. He owns his own business. He gets to break away from time to time, and we go upstairs and run the railroad. Actually, we run the flying field and the railroad at the same time. Another, another thing we enjoy sharing. My son-in-law works for Mike, and so I get a, uh, a daily report of Mike's activities. As, we, as he's in the middle of his flight, I see the, the breeze is just starting to come up, for whatever reason. Mike's got the bada bing going. Actually, this is a true story. They did use... Mike has a beautiful home with a beautiful... We've done his shop on subscriber videos so many times that... The, the thing that's neat about it is he lives very close to where they shoot the Sopranos. And they've used the front yard of his house on occasion to uh, actually see it on the Sopranos, if you know when to look. And they pay him for it. Can you imagine this? They pay him. They pay him for it. Hey, somebody pay me in for it. Just a little side note. If you want to be the world's videographer, you got to know these things. you got to have a database. you got to know everything about everybody. you got to be like Wanda the Witch or something. And I was pleased to hear, very pleased to hear that Lowell Reinhardt in Iowa and his group, they enjoy watching these videos over and over again. Well, I think has every one of these tapes. And he enjoys sharing them and watching them. Okay. And well, I hope you enjoy this set too. Well, with our friends in Canada, Ed Cat, Ed Cotton. 
Ken Claps and John Hack. All the Canadians. Last year we had people from Japan, from Europe. I don't know if we have any foreigners here this year. I've heard we have some people from Spain, but I'm not sure. And of course we have Paul Winter from England and his girlfriend Gail. Well, we give him a rough time, but you know, well, that's the truth is he deserves it. All right, Mike Estella, after a tough start, puts one on the board for the Gipper. Landings. Hi, Mariucci. Sends me pictures of Bob Hunt and tells me they're me. What a guy. What a guy. And then doesn't buy any videos. Man's independently wealthy and only has 200 windy videos. What, what can I say? Oh, this is funny, Ty usually lands inverted, he's even starting it inverted. He used to just stand on his head while he's taking a flight. Alright, by Mariucci. Master Tuner. Well, rookie Tuner. That might be one of the reasons he lands in Berlin so much. He was actually in Texas with us, and he had an event happen. Launched the plane, the plane flew across the circle, caught on the grass, chased him around, tied him all up in knots. People were hysterical laughing, and I didn't have it on video. It's not on the Texas videos. But we did manage to get Al Raby's fabulous, fabulous home and collection of models. Rich Oliver's beautiful shop, Fed Jets factory. That battery's gonna go dead, Ty. Well, at least you have a better looking pit crew than Ty Mariucci. <laughs> yeah. Ty's got the Blues Brothers walking edge in his play. <laughs> All right, young lady, you're going to be famous. You're going to be in seven countries as of Monday morning, so give us a smile. Oh, really? Well, I like shooting women a lot more than these men. <laughs> Look at some of the outfits they wear. Please. I know, really? Jeez, you know, who dresses these guys? Especially the Philly guys. I mean, jeez. You gotta buy them a washing machine to carry around in that dumpster they call the Philly Flyer van. <laughs> you get a lot of respect, you know, George? Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that great? Who are you, George Bush? No, the President George Bush. I'm on the $10 bill. I'm on the $8 bill. Come on! <laughs> what a guy! What a guy! Gwen Kale has claimed the fame. She has shot more pictures and not given me any. Not you gave me two or three out of eight million. <laughs> when do you ever get a picture of me? My bomber, my sweeper. Yeah. You want to put Will Eubin out of business? Come on, put him out of business. Who needs Will Eubin when we have Dawn? Loyal supporter I am. All right. Oh. oh. Now, now that's why they don't give you any respect. Your daughter tightened the prop? Did you tighten that prop? Oh, no. Yeah. I bet Keller tightened that prop. I read it already. Here's the handle. This camera brings everybody equally bad luck. <laughs> he took the tail off, didn't he? <laughs> Let's see what kind of entertainment awaits us. Chris Spillman launching. Go back Oriental ship. Oh. The patented Mike Costello takeoff. One of the more popular Brodak kits, the Oriental, designed by D. Rice. 
And we did see D-Rice down in Texas, and we, be, we did get to see him fly his Super Oriental or Oriental Plus or whatever he calls it. High Test Oriental. Low Jet 40 and a windy pipe, and this flies great. Basically because of the pipe, not the design of the plane, but we're not pressured. TV is interviewing Paul Wynn. I got it. Wait, I got to watch this. Let me apologize for, for losing part of this flight. Sorry. Here's Paul telling him, I'm the greatest flyer that ever lived. Yes, Wendy Ignowski, he's nobody. George Aldrich, I taught George Aldrich everything he knows. But what else? He'll probably say sometimes they come off the line and hit people in the head. Yeah, the yeah, not, not that often. That's what he said, too. Well, <laughs> yes, I know, I know. Oscar Vans in the background here probably wishing he could pull Paul's pants down right now. Yes, I'm the greatest flyer of all time. I only paid eight thousand dollars to get my plane painted so it looks better than Wendy's. What a pork chop. Hey, yeah, I'm a, I'm oh, I make a lot of money. I'm a smart businessman. Wealthy beyond description. My girlfriend spanks me every night in bed. Look at this guy. Look at this. This, this reporter's dumb enough to believe this. <laughs> oh, the, the reporter shuts off the camera. That look, Buzz is telling him, don't, don't ever interview Paul Wynn. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look, look at this action. Look at this guy. Hugs and kisses. Look at this guy. Look at this. Now he's going to tell him how he lost 30 pounds in the last year. Look at this. So the air here is just spectacular. It's cool. There's very little breeze. Very, very nice. And so far the day's hanging in here. All the Regis must be looking down from heaven and saying, I'll make it rain on these guys. Sounds like it's a running out of fuel. Might be appropriate to abandon ship. But not everybody agrees with that philosophy. Some people just continue with Adam. The fuel would appear in the tank miraculously from the heavens above. Mm, looks like he's right. Get it in. Squeeze him again, so to speak.
Good save, good save. All right, good save. <laughs> All the toilet paper sponsors are lining up to see this flight. The NASCAR toilet paper will fly off here. So on the wingtip pool, the wingtip's nice. Yeah. That's a nice deal. Just That'd be nice for putting your batteries in a wingtip for a Z-Tron or something. Yeah, it would. Well, you know, excuse me, you thank Mr. Cherry in England for that, because that's his idea. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm amazed you're giving somebody credit. That is good. Jeez, I'm ready to go to my grave with a happy smile. We're going to be on telly tonight. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'll sell you the video, Paul. <laughs> but he was videoing you being filmed. I was putting words in your mouth. Where do you see my commentary? Let me get Terry's flight. You guys are showing off again. All right, Terry, Terry Toilet Paper McDowell. Terry T, so to speak. Charmin, for short. If that was a definition of stun heaven, it's right now. Well, before the rain's been. Let's hope it doesn't rain now. Boy, is it nice right now. Cool, too. Not even sweating. As we stand here, you can hear Paul talking. You believe this?
Ferry. Always go fast. I love it. You said you had those socket head screws, Joe? When did he fly the real fast ones, or did he do this intermittently? Uh, yeah, you just fly it. Just when you want. You want you know. Are these the hottest ones? This one. What are the hottest ones, the 60s? Yeah, they, they were in the 40s and the 60s together. Pretty close. I don't understand it. Oh. There's absolutely a beautiful plane here. We're going to get some close-up to this. Gary Tulsa's Hurricane. Walker Hurricane. What a beauty. Very Pulse of Ohio. Oh, I love Invasion Stripes. I love British airplanes. Awesome, he's even got the little radiator on the bottom. Prototypical oil cooler. We'll get some close ups for this, that's for sure. Very cool. From all the British plane lover, I've made two Spitfires and a Typhoon. All with invasion stripes, all with as many little details as I thought I could get away with. One even having a sliding canopy. Not everybody has a sliding canopy. This looks like it flies really well. Nicely towered.
最操。This used to be popular on motorcycle training years ago. In fact, during the era that I owned my the motorcycle training business, this was one of the vogue things. Don't see much of it on there, but it's uh, real cool. You lay a, a berry or a piece of lace curtain on top of it and spray through it and peel off the curtain. Okay. Very unique, especially because it's an oriental. Kind of keeps with the motif. Randy, you must have miles and miles. Kind of rant reminds me of gold leaf, like they used to do. Sportsman related person disconnected our battery charger today, so we've proven one battery short. Somebody's, somebody's gonna get an ass whipping. I'm gonna hot, hot stuff those battery chargers to the wall. Jimmy Barelli.
looks like he's got a good run going here on this. Sleep over here. Oh. Somebody fell asleep. Get the roll of toilet paper. 
Every night? Yeah. I try to get as many sexy women on my video as possible. In case they don't buy it for the planes, let them buy it for the women. Have you seen that? on virtually every circle has a competitive event going right now. And we've just been enjoying going from event to event to event to event to event. This is John Burdak's leg that has a Z-Tron. That's the Z-Tron right there. Z-Tron Retrax. I don't know if Bob can demonstrate these. Hey, Bob. Can you demonstrate the Retrax or do you need to have the battery charged? So this, this has the look of uh, maybe he needs a little training. <laughs> Flight training. Jeez, you guys are really efficient. Got all the right accoutrements here and everything. Try to. Well, I'm not efficient. We just keep working until we're done. <laughs> Don't think that screwdriver is going to be a problem if you keep banging on it either. No problem. No, it's not a problem. At least the low words. Hello? Sandy found you? Yes, she Okay, did. good. You. Z would be in here to demonstrate the retract and show us this header system for this five-cylinder radio. He said that we're gonna that we're gonna fly this at the end of the event up on the tar circle. Maybe Jack Sheets would get to fly it or whatever. And uh, we'd certainly stay around for that. That's for sure. That's the whole virus. Look at this. Did you bring your computer? We had to. Tell remember. me you didn't bring your, your own laptop's computer. all full of business. Stuff. Oh, we gotta, man. we got to upload all the photos. So. Oh, wow. It's half wet. What did you get the other part? What happened to that, Rachel? No, that was well, death. You can really write. Well, he could write about his But he can't story. fly worth a damn. <laughs> we still like him, though. Okay. Like him. Malcolm, put that on with one drop of CA. <laughs> Don't reinforce it at all. Just no, no, he's gonna crash again. You would have to re-glue the glue joints. No repairs. Let me tell you the trick with this so it never happens again. Okay. Okay. The piece of the plywood should go forward at least two inches. Forget about going back. The only force this ever encounters is to pull it back. If you make it longer forward, you can fly into a brick wall. That's Bill Rich. I tried to teach him that trick. That one year they kept breaking it out drunk, breaking it out drunk, breaking it out drunk. It's like the epoxy team. I always want to see what eight ounces heavier by the time they were done. No, because they were flying on the grass, and it was, if you make it far, I think Randy makes motor mount kind of thing. That's the way you do that on the planes. Right, but they have to go forward. You don't care if it goes back, but forward. Same thing with wing gear. If you make the wire goes into the wing long enough, you can make the things out of balsa wood. Yeah, squeeze that up. Well, last year here when I was flying that uh, geo looking airplane, first fly, I hit some bad air and I hit the loop. I just hit the ground. Mm. Both the gear, bent them back, didn't break the even break. 
Oh, have a nice trick if you when you're doing some kind of repair like this, get a piece of saran wrap. Yeah, but wrap I'm it with saran wrap and just hold it with your hand because the saran wrap won't stick. I have a paper towel over there because I'm getting pumped. you're getting glued to the plane. And I'm getting epoxy all over the plane. Yeah, yeah. wet paper towel. Anybody have saran yeah, wrap? There's no saran wrap, saran wrap here. The saran wrap trick works good. I'm just trying to get it off the. Put it with a little hair dryer if you, somebody got a hair dryer here. What's a dry paper towel so what? No, no, no. no. soften the epoxy, get it more capillary. It'll go off it ends up with one a heat gun? No, no, not a heat gun. It, not that it goes off faster, it'll penetrate better. Oh. You know, it's thinner, it'll get into the wood, especially plywood. That's a good trick. I mean, I've, I've put it in like in here and heat it up and, you know, Yeah, oh yeah. Get yeah. it in the... Get it to cover all the little seams and everything. <laughs> you deleted the whole thing. Well, I've made Derek famous. I got that that, that 300 mile an hour Dale Earnhardt flight that he put <laughs> with not two quarters exactly the same, no bottoms. Oh man, embarrassing. But I could be, you know, for a few bucks I could erase that tape. <laughs> Money talks here, post the video. <laughs> Look at this, there's multiple surgeries going on here. Look at this. You got it on? Yep. You're going to put some glass cloth on there? What? No, it's you got to hurt. Heaven forbid what? these guys what? are. We are the Philly Flyers. We, we, are we live on the edge. We need one flight out of this. <laughs> yeah. Are you going to do the mass fly with this now? <laughs> well, <laughs> it's eligible. Actually, you know, yeah, okay. Nose was off of it once. Dan Belly, who we have this on a subscriber videos. Of, he's demonstrating this. It has retracts, but it has a one-of-a-kind servo that wasn't working and it needs to be worked on. And Bobby made the servo, by the way. I was hoping we could demonstrate the retracts. I don't think we can, I don't, unless he's going to work on it, which I doubt. But uh, that was pretty cool. Looking, they were looking for somebody in command here. I thought it would be you. I didn't think uh, that... The women that make it all happen. Look at those fingers go, baby. Man, you play a piano or something for a living? Look at that. I'm very impressed. Too short, man. You're a little white on shirts, you know? Yeah. I'm on my house looking like, looking like there's no laundromats where you live. All the shirts is from large people. I wear small. This lady told me to take, eat some food. <laughs> All right, Mickey, now we got a battery in the camera that works. Let me see what you're doing. I'm just Oh, Is it good? You guys try to play that Mexican thing on me. Watch when you explode. Look at that. Boom. <laughs> No, it's yeah, my brother, let's take New York. They got a little bit of books. Okay. He makes it strong. Oh, okay, we'll try it then. It's delicious. You'll love it. It's nice and spicy. Ken, tell me, when do you, what time do you guys want to light the grill? You want to do the grill for lunch? Well, that's apparently what we're going to have to do because Ken's judging for the next four hours. Oh, okay. So I'll I'm going to have to run food up to him and he's kind of getting hungry. Can I get so, Where's Shelly? Well, Shelly's up the top of the hill, we're going to have to get together and find out what time we're going to light the grill. What is this, Mickey? I've never seen this. It's just a fun part. It looks like a Christmas thing. It's a, well, it's a scarf. Oh, okay. It's a triangle scarf. But it's something to dress up with my dress like that. Oh, okay. What's the lady's looking for in here to entertain her? Her mega mind. I'm ah! knitting socks. Booties, booties! I know it for me. I love this booties. This is for a big girl. You know what I call it? I call those booty arch guys. Booty arch guys. Booty arch guys. No, do I invent words? So I can't come out with a word. I make it up. Booty arch guy. My wife has the coldest feet in the world. Luckily, she has a man that gives her unlimited hot oil foot massages at her command, I'll have you know. What? At her command. What? And you give lessons? I give demos. <laughs> but the women have to swear they're not going to moan and groan. <laughs> oh, you're dry the if they moan and groan and get all aroused, then I'm in big trouble. <laughs> Bob Brookins will have to paint my car. <laughs> Don't worry, 
sorry, Tom, the Brinks truck is on its way so you can get Larry Scorinzi's money. <laughs> How do, you part, how do you get that to part with him? Forget it, you gotta kill him. Oh my god. Well, it's a new concept. It's called the Legends Ooh. Discount. Legends Discount. What did you pay for in the early days? <laughs> right. That seems fair to you now. Right. And Larry Screens is the only one qualified. You have to be over 100 years old. Well, Lance Bianchi walked out. I'm not to say that. I'm, to him. I'm a bigger legend than he is. <laughs> well, he's bigger anyway. <laughs> I don't know about legends. Look at these earrings. Oh my god. Look at, look at these earrings. Oh my god, I'm getting aroused looking at your ears. It looks like the Eddie Elastic Pants. Tell me spray some castor oil in a You better spray something on me here pretty soon. It says that, yeah, they're mine. Well, you gotta narrow these. Those, right there. I saw your big uh, sweeper in there. You gonna fly it for me? Well, I'll float it for you. I know, you're a man. But see, you're a real man. We gotta see if Banjok can fly it. <laughs> then I'll be impressed. Yeah. God, that thing flew in like, oh, yeah. man. Oh, man, that Wendy's a lot better than I thought he was. I thought, man, really that's good. <laughs> you know, you got awful strong legs and an anchor in your butt. Yeah. Well, I got the anchor in my butt. Yeah, <laughs> just, just mark off what the uh, rear is. So, just so that they won't. You're going to fly the big scale biplane for John? Is that the deal? I will if he wants to. Well, I'd love to get some video of that, because I can't go to the scale line. I'll be at the World Championship. Yeah, already? Okay. I want to see it fly. Well, we're going to fly. Sunday, well, make sure you, yeah, make sure you get me. I'll, I'll, right I'll get a guy. Is when take okay, it. right, good. You know, if you try to see if he can get it airborne now, he's going to have to move the leadout guy out farther toward the end of the ring. Okay. He's sitting on the struts. And you got yeah, to yeah, yeah, yeah. Make it do this, you know? I don't know if this is the combat adventure or what, we're going to see, check it out. Yeah, they're flying combat over here, I guess we're going to start having matches, I hope we can get some good ones. Usually they get, they do get some good matches going. They got a pretty good entry this year in combat, so we'll see if we can get some matches. Our own legendary friend, Lou Willard. Lou the Legend Willard. Did you catch some of his fight? He's already halfway through. No, not halfway through. Lou the Climb and Dive got a beautiful smoothie. Probably one of his own Silver Fox reworked engines, but that'd be a lucky guess on my part. Oh, you can see the clouds are rolling in. I really hope we can light up the grill here, but boy, oh boy, is that going to be a high-risk operation. Not sure what Lou is doing here, Lou. Before we go, 12 laps inverted here. Lou, what's going on? Yes! Danny Banjak's pusher farmed him. Danny's repaired, it was crashed, but it is repaired to like new condition. Miss Susie Q, winner of countless local contests. Cooking with gas. <laughs> All right. Well, it's a completely different airplane. Uh, I'm saying, it looks, it looks like uh, Shades of Windows. Oh. Now, you know what you do the next time Winter's around? Just, you know, go like this. And <laughs> put the B-25 down. Yeah, that's, that's what I told him. After your appearance, judging, I'd like to get you, me, and him together. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And make sure he's not in the picture. <laughs> that's come out great. Let me see the, uh, can you flip it, Pete? Uh, uh, the flaps are not, I got the unit in there locked in the trunk. Oh, okay. But the flaps work, the bomb bay doors, but the turret doesn't move because it's only a three channel. Right. So I have the throttle, the bombs, and the flaps. Okay. Oh, that's fair. I think it looks better than it. No, it I wouldn't say that. I'd settle for almost as good. That's right. Well, I'll tell you. There's no doubt about it. A 25 is a sexy model. Yeah, I see somebody learned on, on the uh, on the paint scheme of getting the shadows just right. Yeah, but he's got more videos than you. <laughs> In the same way, the nacelles and that, they're all fiber. You figure there's 31,000 out there somewhere. You only got 300, so they got to be 29,000 somewhere else. The 
Collins and Yeah, that Scott. looks great. That looks good. I am impressed, as always. You gonna fly it? Yeah. Yeah, and make sure I'm there. Now, don't fly well, it. The thing of it is, last year when you were there, when they kept holding me up, you were down here flying your own. So, oh, you man. At the same time, yeah. Man, I need to get some of this on video, baby. That is nice. Now, I call that the transition from pure profile to in-between profile. Here's the thing. Never let the rules get in the way of building the plane you want to build. Well, that's the why. The rules or the score have nothing to do with the event we fly. If you feel like building something, build it. Let the chips fall. But it doesn't fit in any class. So that's why you fly it in fun scale where you can just fly the plane. Pete, if there was no skill, if there was no class for my plane, people would go home remembering it. Oh, who cares if there's a class? Yeah, right. You gotta throw the trophy away anyway. You can't eat it. You can't. You can't sell it. You see in where the flaps are, the lightning holes. The e part in the lightning holes. Yes. Yes. And that little bit of exhaust on the top of the wing. Very nice. Very very nice. And I put the guy in the gun in the nose this time. All right. You should have taken a picture of me and put me in the nose. Your nose and then the guy wouldn't fit. <laughs> you would need a gun. You would need a gun sight with my nose. And you got lights, of course. Oh yeah, landing lights, nav lights. Uh, with those, uh, there's two forties on there. <laughs> it weighs about. Um, you, you got thirty ounces of hardware in the seven, front of the plane. Uh, it weighs a little over seven pounds. Let it fly. It'll pull you over, though. <laughs> I can only fly about two thirds throttle because it's too hard on my arms. You have more power in this than I have in mine. Yeah. Well, I needed it because it was getting a little heavier. And as always. But see, on the original documentation, it was just yellow on the tail with the A. I put the red, white, and blue in there because I needed a little bit of color just to, to move it back. But who cares about the rules? I, yeah, who cares? I did it for me. This yeah, is my year. I built a whole model for me to help with anybody else. And the little red gas caps on the wing. The shading. You know what makes it? The shading. Oh, absolutely. Without the shading, it would be a lot less jump out at you. Yeah. Yes. And yes. the same way I made the invasion stripes, what I wanted to make it look better to fit it to fit the airplane. Well, somebody had to come measure them and say they'd ever had these at Normandy? Uh, well, I've seen a lot of them with real big. I've seen them with three black stripes, two white. Uh, Do you know how they painted the invasion stripes on? Do you know, a brush. With a brush the night before the invasion. No rulers, no chalk line. They just took a brush and painted them on. The day before the invasion, that one plane had invasion stripes. Right. So you think they measured, well, we're in chalk. We're going to get our ass shot up tomorrow. <laughs> just paint them on. And anything without invasion strike, shoot it down. Show no mercy. Very cool, Pete. Very Thank cool. You. you got the other one? You can take like both in the I same picture. I room for everything, so I thought this year I'll just. Oh, okay. Yeah. Be nice to get a picture of both of them. Well, I have it at home. I have pictures. I'll send them. Get a, give me a couple pictures with both of them. Yeah. You can get my bomber and your too, like I had babies or something. Well, the thing too, I have this one here, and I have the blue one behind. Right, right. The zero and the. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be great if you ever crashed the zero. You set it on fire and then take a quick picture. Yeah. How you doing? Right now? Very good, Pete. I'm impressed. I've got, but do not let this fly without me getting some video. Okay. Oh, it would be. Who flies? Uh, it's, 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 35s. 35s. He's got bigger engines than I do. Well, OS don't make 35s anymore. You know what I'm saying? 30. Yeah. 30. Well, I want. Yeah. Smith. Oh my God. You ready? Yeah, so we're, we're light the grill. I can't light the grill. Where's Shelly? Listen, here. Bernie's going to help you for one minute because I'm going to go get another table. If it doesn't know or hasn't followed or unsubscribed to the video, guys, Danny did have an accident with this. Had major repair work. Did a fabulous job of putting it back together. You can hardly see it's ever been even heard at all. A great job. Oh! It's Joe Alonso! Hey, Joe. Tiger Cat Man. He did a great job. Yeah, he did a fabulous job.
Dave coming? Dave's in, uh, he's in France. He's with Norman. Oh, oh, oh. Norman D. He's D. on vacation. Okay. That yeah, reminds me of the days when I used to love falling off of these things. No, <laughs> thank God I am not interested anymore. They are fun, but boy, when you fall, does it ever hurt. Makes my knees and elbows hurt just thinking about it. So I love model planes.